if the you reason, watch us later. The reason we're talking about what time you get up or people who are sleeping and whatever is we're going to analyse dreams. You saw it in the opening titles there. How did you sleep last night? You were We've... mumbling away. What do you mean I was oh, mumbling mumble, away? Mumble, mumble. What was I saying? Love things to you. No, there might be someone else. <laughs> See, That's you the worry. You... Oh, yeah. No, no you weren't. Actually, no, did I think I you were being names? chased. No, I think you were being chased. You were doing like, oh, come on. Oh. Yeah. <sighs> Never mind this hearsay. We've got a dream expert in the studio this really? morning. That's Ian Wallace. And, uh, Ian, uh, the thing is about dreams, you tend, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, only to remember the last dream that you had near near to waking up. Is that right? No, that is wrong, Eamon. Is that there? Yeah, so Eamon. much for that oh, information. Yes, yeah, so we dream up to five times per night, and in total during that you will dream for two hours. So you spend a twelfth of your life dreaming. And okay. Then, and I'm quite busy in my dreams. Yeah. That can be quite exhausting. That's, that's a good thing. Is that? What we do in our dreams is a way of processing our emotions and our spiritual awareness. So if you're busy in your dreams, Ruth, you've got lots of things to process, yes. which will naturally make you a more powerful woman. An even more powerful woman. <laughs> An even more I powerful woman. I have quite woman. anxious dreams, though. So I have a recurring dream about this show that we're all kind of setting up. And I say, I must just go to the loo. And I go out through a door and I end up in a shopping centre or somewhere I'm not supposed to be. That and I'm wandering sense. around thinking, yes. oh, those shoes are nice. And then suddenly I go, oh, it's 25 past 10. Mm. And then I can't find my way back to the studio. And I say, I'm very anxious. And I have that dream quite a lot. Why don't you apply that dream with the lessons that to catching an airplane on time, <laughs> for instance? <laughs> So that's the 18th most common dream route, <gasps> being unable to do some form of public performance. Mm. So what it means is that you are too self-critical. You spend too much time judging yourself right. and trying to please other people. No that's names what mentioned, I say. No names mentioned. What do I say yeah. about you? And what in do I doing, say? Yeah. In, what people please yeah. people please. So you need to be more assertive of what you need. So that's when you go and find the toilet in your yeah. dream. You're trying to understand your needs and how you can fulfil them independently. Amazing. Well, look, we've got Ian, Ian's coming it? back later on, and what we're going to have is a phone in on this because hopefully that's got you talking, it's got you thinking about your dreams, what dreams you had, if they're good, bad, bizarre. They, they mean nothing to anyone else, they may mean something to you. They'll he will analyse, he will yeah. analyse. So give us a call. Dreams, dreams or nightmares, that's what we're talking about. Earlier in the show, we asked you to tell us about those to help make head or tail of them. A dream expert, Ian Wallace. Ian, one of the main inquiries we've got is people being asleep and then suddenly waking up with a, a jolt. Jolting, like you're falling. Yes, so this is called the hypnic jerk or myclonic jerk, and it's purely physiological. So when you go to sleep, you relax all the tension in your muscles or your large anti-gravity mm -hmm. muscles. Mm -hmm. And as you do that, there'll be a final residual tension that you let go of, and that's that feeling of jerking mm -hmm. that you have. So you might feel you're falling off a pavement mm. or down some stairs. So it's just you completely Lots relaxing. Of people the ask most that common, Daniel, the most Daniel. common dreams are nightmares. Uh, that's what I would associate my dreams with. But what I have constantly is that business that. In your dream, you cannot warn anybody, you cannot speak, you can't, which may be a blessing. Or run, uh, it has to be you're said to, to some run. people. No, and it's my dream, darling. Oh. Stay out of my dream. Thank you. It's my <laughs> dream. Not running anywhere. Uh -huh. I'm trying to squeal, I'm trying to talk to people, and I literally can't open my mouth. So, we talk a lot in the day. Probably. So, there are some things that you would like to say in waking life, Eamon. Yes. And not necessarily bad things, no, but maybe more, maybe more powerful things yes. that you'd like to say in waking life, but you feel that you can't say within the constraints of your public image. See? Mm, See? See? I have more to say. More to say. And if you weren't to write me, I'd be able to. Oh, how long have we got? Yes. OK, let's go straight to the phones for Rebecca. Hello, Rebecca. Hi there. Hello. So, what's your dream? What's you, what did you dream last night? Um, I always dream that my mouth is full of grit. Get out and of no it. matter how much I try and get it out, whether I'm rinsing it, scraping it out, it's, it won't go. It's just oh, full all the time. So it's full of sand, so grit, grit and soil. Yeah. Well, what yeah, that? always coarse, gritty stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like a potty mouth you have. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Rebecca. So, as Eamon was saying when we're chatting with Eamon, when you dream about your mouth, it's all about how you communicate in waking life. And anything to do with grit or sand indicates dryness. It's like a desert, Rebecca. So you need to have some more emotion in the way that you communicate. Maybe you communicate too dryly in waking life or you hide your emotions from other people. So to get your emotions moving and to get your communication moving, don't be afraid to be more emotional in how you speak to other people and to connect with those inside yourself. Do you find it hard sometimes, Rebecca, communicating, saying what you mean? Um, not really, no. I mean, 
normally I'm quite outspoken with it, especially with my partner or anything like that. If I'm upset or there's something wrong, we'll normally talk about it. So, yeah, but I'm you, quite you think about yeah, maybe that. there's something else, there's something she wants or needs to say, and there's maybe one specific thing. Yeah, so you might communicate, Rebecca, in quite a gritty or dry way. So you might be very, very objective about how you communicate. And what you really need to do is be more intuitive and more em emotional. So rather than trying yeah. to sort something out objectively mm. and in a black and mm. white in a very dry manner, don't be afraid just to let your intuition and mm. empathy Gosh. take over a bit. Interesting. And, just like that and do you ever wake up and your mouth's a right mess in the morning? <laughs> <laughs> Scratching at yet, no. OK. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. Let's go to Erica. You, Erica bye. dreams about yeah. her house falling down. Tell us more. Hello. Hiya. Hiya. Yeah, it's, it's not my house. It's a house I'm in, in the dream. But each time it doesn't appear to be the same house, but the same thing happens, um, i.e. behind me the house is cr uh, crumbling away. And one time it was like a slope at the back and that was crumbling and it just disappeared. So falling um, down around her ears. Yeah, yeah. hi Erica. So when hi. you dream of a house, this is the most common dream symbol. And the reason that we all dream of houses is that houses have got insides and outsides and so do we. So it yeah. symbolises your identity. So when you dream that your house is crumbling, even though it's not your house, you're feeling that you are perhaps not presenting an assertive enough identity in waking life. You maybe spend a lot of your time trying to please other people or look after other people rather than thinking about who you really are and what you would really like to do with your life. Wow. So the crumbling house is all about maintaining healthy personal boundaries as symbolised by the walls of the house. So the action from the dream is don't be afraid to say no and don't be afraid to have those healthy boundaries around yourself. Does that make wow. sense? Does that it make does. sense, Erica? It does. it does. It makes a lot of sense. Oh. Um, mm -hmm. It just really does. Good. Well, thanks, Erica, because this next dream makes no sense, no at, sense all. at all. Um, we've got Lynn. <laughs> Lynn, um... <laughs> Lynn... Just let Lynn tell it. No, no, no. We're going to put... Oh, OK, Lynn. Lynn, go ahead. Come on, Lynn. Lynn. Hello, all. Hello. Forgive us um, laughing at your well, dream. Uh, well, well, it was terrifying, actually, so stop laughing. Um, what she say? Uh, it was what? Terrifying. Terrifying. <laughs> well, it would be. It was um, uh, basically the, the sort of two dreams. Mine was by I was uh, looking out of my hallway window innocently and there were chickens dressed as enemy soldiers trying to shoot me through the glass. <laughs> and um, it was really scary. Were they giant chickens or small no. chickens? They were normal-sized chickens. Normal-sized chickens remember. dressed as soldiers. Stop laughing. Don't laugh. Stop laughing. It's not funny. Stop, it's not stop funny. laughing. Yes. And um, it, around about the same time, my friend had a dream about chickens shooting fireballs out of their bum. So, basically, I want to know, what is it about chickens? <laughs> Chicken obsession. What come out of their bottom? What? No, don't go. Don't ask. Fireball. No, shooting <laughs> fireballs <laughs> at someone's fireball. bottom. Oh. At someone's bottom, I think. Right. Anyway. Out of Chickens. someone's bottom. Shush. They were firing it out of their own bottom. Yes. Exactly. I heard it <laughs> right. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> there we go. Highland, so here's my expert opinion, rather than that of my dream apprentices here. <laughs> so any time you dream about chickens, Lynn, you're dreaming about your courage. So rather than being fearful about something and being chicken about it, you've maybe got some fertile plan that you're trying to hatch, and that's why your friend was dreaming about chickens as well. But the chickens being dressed as soldiers suggests that you aren't giving yourself the authority to go ahead with this fertile plan that you're trying to hatch. So rather than allowing fear to dictate your actions in waking life, Lynn, just go ahead, be courageous, and if you've got some great plan, something that's just growing and brewing for you, mm -hmm. just go ahead and start working uh, with well, it. Well, on that subject, growing in the chicken's bottom is a fireball, right? Yes. Why would they be hatching fireballs? Because fire's all about creativity, Eamon. It's about being able to transform a situation through creativity. So that's why we have words in our language like someone who's really fiery or is really passionate or having a blaze of creativity. So all those words are about hatching a really creative plan that Lynn and her friend are passionate about. So, Lynn, does that make sense? Are you passionate about something, you and your friend? Um, that's sort of interesting, because I do have um, a creative blog, which I started up afterwards, and it's actually named after my daughter, who used to call herself Molly Chicken. So even though I'm a little bit yeah. scared of my daughter... So there we go. There you go. That sort of makes sense. There you go. Yeah. 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 Ye
Don't worry about it, OK? <laughs> so I Thank you, I Lynn. don't need to go and see a psychiatrist, then. No, 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 no you're no, all right. You're all sorted I'm, now. I'm sorry for laughing at you. Um, I, want to go, <laughs> I want to go to Anne, cos this is a, a dream a lot of people talking okay. about. Hello, Anne, are you there? Hello, Anne. Hello, it's me, Hello, Anne. hi. So you dream about getting lost, is that right? Yeah, getting lost in strange places like city centres that I don't recognise. Mm-hmm shopping areas and I'm looking for my partner and I can't find him and I'm trying to phone him on the mobile and I can't get hold of him. <laughs> and also you say he's always looking for the toilet. Yes, that's, me. that's another problem yeah. as that's well. That's absolutely well, me. I'm do... always looking for a toilet and every time I find one the door's broken or it's closed oh, down. Or... Yes. Yes. Have you ever yes. wet your pants in real life? <laughs> What? I mean, are you fearful? Between me and... Like we five or something in this. Probably. Yes. Yeah. Yes. OK, right. Hi, Anne. So this is the third most common dream that people have. So that's you having the third most common dream, Ruth. And again, just working with language, not doing the pointy hat, swirly cape stuff, just working with language and symbolism. We have this phrase in our language, needing the toilet. So when you have a toilet dream, Anne, it's about fulfilling your own needs in waking life. And because you're getting lost, again, it's an identity dream, you probably spend a lot of your time looking after the needs of other people rather than looking after your own needs. So the action from the dream, Anne, is just do something for Anne, have some Anne time, Gosh. and look after yourself, look after your own needs, well, rather yeah, than feeling that, that to look that after is, the needs of other people. That is uh, fabulous. That's I'm having a bit of a nightmare going on in my ear at the moment, so I've okay. got to say goodbye to okay. you. <laughs> thank thank you, very you very much indeed. Very, very nice to, to talk to you. Good, thank, thank you. Thank you, Ian. Fascinating. Thank you, thank you for all and your calls. sweet dreams tonight, everybody. So